everybody, John at IPT Trans. Um, today we're going to be doing a Toyota A750 bow body. Get a lot of questions on these. There's a you know, couple things you need to know, so we're going to go over all that and hopefully it'll make it a lot easier for everybody. Alright, first thing obviously is we're taking the pan off. I'm doing this on the bench. Most people are going to be doing it under the car, but this is a heck of a lot easier way to make a video. Alright, filter comes off. All the bolts you're dealing with here are going to be 10 millimeter bolts. Okay. There's an O-ring here. You don't want to lose that. That's the filter O-ring, obviously. Um, this detent spring, we're going to take this off because it obscures two of these other bolts. We'll put that on the side. Okay. Um, the first thing is, is there's a whole bunch of connectors here, as you can see. Alright, um, there's a few different styles. These are pretty self-explanatory. You, you press a tab and they come out. But this other type looks like it has a tab here, but it, it really doesn't. What you have to do is push on the back side of it and kind of scoot it out like that. Okay. Otherwise, you're going to break them. This has another tab to be depressed here. And the rest are the same. Okay, now you also have two sensors that are in the valve body. You got to take note of their position. We have an orange one here and a blue wire one here, okay? And that's got to come out. So there's two brackets with 10 millimeter bolts and they kind of engage in a slot in here like so when you're putting them back on. Okay? And there, there are little rubber O-rings on there that you want to make sure you don't damage on the way in. So now we get our wiring harness out of the way. We're also going to take note that there's a bracket here that holds the wiring harness. If you want, you could just scribe a little X in there and you, you know where that belongs. Okay, now you got a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts. And we're just going to go ahead and take all of those out. Alright, now we lift the valve body up. And we have to unhook this rod. This is your manual rod and your manual valve. Okay. Now we got a few more things inside and this isn't so bad now but a lot of you guys are doing this upside down so some of this stuff is going to fall out on you. Alright. So you got to watch out for that. I'll show you where it all goes back in. But the first thing is this cooler line check valve and spring. And that's a real light spring, like a you know ballpoint pen spring, and that's real easy to get lost. So careful of that. Now you have one accumulator piston, and this is going to have two springs. This could vary, but in this one we got a, a violet colored spring and a green spring in that location. But you want to kind of keep this all together. Especially if you're sending a valve body to us, what we like people to do is package these things up individually and send them. That way we can see what springs it came with and if we have to give different springs on the way back, it's a lot easier and it's easier for you to put back together. Okay? So the same thing here, we have another piston with two springs. Another one, this one only has one spring. And the fourth one is here. Okay. Now, another thing, you have these little lube seals and sleeves. All right. This holds hydraulic pressure to your clutch packs. These little seals may fall out on you. There's little tubes in here also. That's what they look like 
this probably isn't going to fall out, but just be aware of what it looks like if it does, okay? So you're going to want to make sure you have three of these in here and three seals. And if you're doing this in the car, with our valve bodies, we supply some of this transmission grease. You just want to put some of this grease on here and you can kind of glue that seal into place so you defy gravity a little bit. Alright? Now, the same thing with these pieces. We're going to put some of the assembly glue on there, which, you know, we really don't have to do when it's on the bench, but if you're doing it up in the car, it helps. You kind of stick all these things up in there. So we're going to put these pistons all back to where they came from. They only fit in one way. You can't really put them in the wrong spot. Okay, so you have three there. Now, this ball and spring, when it's up in the car, you really have to put a lot of this grease on it and kind of put the spring in because this thing will try and fall out. And where it goes, there's a rectangular shaped hole here. And it goes right in there. Alright, when we're putting this back in, we've got to hook this back into what we call the rooster comb here. There's a hole that this rod engages into. Okay? So that's got to be engaged or you're going to have some problems. This is not going to move. Alright? So we put that back in and now we have to put our bolts back in. Okay, there's only three different length bolts, and this is, you know, pretty self-explanatory. You're going to have four long ones, and they all kind of go towards the front. This one we're going to put in for now. We're going to take it back out in a minute because that holds the bracket for, for one of the sensors. Now we're going to put this one in with our wiring bracket. And you're going to see this is kind of sprung up a little bit. These, these accumulator pistons and their springs are kind of pushing up against the valve body. So you're going to have to deal with that a little bit while you're putting this back in the car. And the rest of our bolts are all the, the same length, except for the uh, filter bolts and, and for one of these sensor brackets. put these two sensors in first. Again, your orange goes here, and we have to slide our little bracket into it. And this takes a short pull. This other one takes one of the long bolts. And these brackets can only face on one way, but you wouldn't be able to put them on wrong. And another thing, this wiring harness actually goes under here, okay, when you have it on. Now, the right tool for the job, kids, is a torque wrench. You don't want to crank these down with an impact gun. You know, it's kind of a sensitive thing, and this particular valve body doesn't even have gaskets, so we're relying on everything being flat and, and being even. Alright, so we're going to go to 80 inch pounds for all the bolts.
these connectors are kind of self-explanatory, but if you're more comfortable, you could kind of either use this video or take a picture when you take it out to make sure you know which colors are going to which solenoid. But it's you kind of can't put them in wrong. And these all, they go in the same way. They're easier to put in to take out. They just kind of push in. And these wires go through this bracket here. Okay, so now we have everything on there. And I just like to go over everything and make sure they're in because who wants to take the pan off again and have a check engine light. Uh, code because one of the sensors is not plugged in. Okay, we'll put our filter on. And we want to make sure we hook this detent spring back up. It's got two little protrusions on it that kind of has to go a certain way and, and this is kind of going to be centered on that rooster comb when you have it in right. Okay, so we're just going to take that down. And you don't really, that's not something you need to torque nor are the filter bolts. They're kind of, you don't have nothing to do with sealing or anything like that. Now before I put the pan, I just want to show you guys something. The way this pan is set up, we have two plugs on the bottom. This is a drain plug, and this is a level plug, okay? This is a 14 millimeter hex, whereas this is a, a 5 millimeter Allen. And how this works is when you fill this transmission up, you actually overfill it a little bit, and you pull this plug out until fluid stops coming out. And the way that works is there's kind of a little uh, protrusion in here and, and when the fluid gets up to this level it starts pouring out. So, you know, it's just going to stop on its own and it's going to be correct at, at this level. All right. So a lot of people don't know how to fill these transmissions up. So we put our pan on and um, I'm just going to put this on with a couple bolts and I'm going to show you where you're going to want to fill it up through or the easiest place. Okay. Just flip this thing over. You'll see back here that there's a plug. Okay, So you can kind of fill it up through there until it stops coming out through that, that bottom plug. Once it does, you put the bottom plug back in and you take it for a ride. All right. So when you, you take it for a ride, get it up to operating temperature, and when you're done, you're going to pull that plug out again. And it, transmission fluid expands a little bit when it gets hot, and in all likelihood, a little bit more is going to come out. When it stops coming out, you put that plug back in and it should be at the correct level. And that's about it. That's all there is to it.